are nearly done. Yeah, almost done the whole campaign. Hello, everybody. And welcome back to another episode of our Glacier Ridge campaign. Uh, this is a Monster of the Week campaign. I'm going to just preface with that because we have it listed as Dungeons of the Dragons on Twitch, but they don't have a section for us, so we have to stream under something. Anyway, uh, Monster of the Week uh, is a game done by Michael Sands. Um, it is a game based on your favorite Monster of the Week TV series. X-Files, Dresden Files, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Supernatural... Uh, the list goes on. Apparently Scooby-Doo is technically considered one. Um, there was another one that somebody... Oh, uh, Par... Oh, what do... What's it called? Smallville. That was apparently another one that was Monster of the Week. Um, anyway. So, this is a campaign that is based in Canada. It's based in a small, made-up town known as Glacier Ridge. Glacier Ridge is two hour hike from the Nahani Valley National Park. Um, and it's a bit of a drive away from the closest place that is real, Fort Simpson. So this campaign takes place in that town um, just so that we have easy access to Nahani Valley because that's where the majority of the uh, things are going to happen. Um, this group of adventurers is a cast and crew of a online TV series. Uh, the TV series is known as The Search. Um, basically what they're doing is they get reports of things that are happening um, or monsters that have been seen. So somebody says, oh, I saw Bigfoot. They go and search it out. Um, they somebody says oh the goat man's here they go and search it out um, and they're trying to search for the truth and find out if things are real things are fake or what's up um other than spoiler that, alert they're fake thank you wyatt our resident non-believer um, why it sounds quite old <laughs> yeah well He'll, he'll fix that, I'm sure. Um, anyway, so, um, moving right along. That's pretty much all you need to know about the campaign so far, I guess. Um, yeah, they went to Glacier Ridge because they found some evidence that there might be stuff happening here. Uh, then, we're going to do a quick recap. So, last week, we were... just talking basically to start off the episode um they were discussing what to do um it was decided that the security guards which is a great decision if you ask me security guards are going to go into the woods and tear down the pillar uh or the altar that was causing all the problems so they went to wilderness outfitters got some stuff so they could go into the woods and do that um then the rest of the party started going around town and kind of figuring stuff out, talking to people. Uh, Frankie had the great, brilliant idea that uh, they were going to go and take a nap in the cave where they ran into the monster to begin with. Um, before they did that, they also went to a um, antique shop, the antiquity shop, Evans Antiquities in town um and picked up a uh like tape recorder not digital just old style old school tape recorder um so after they did that they started heading out towards the caves and then wyatt showed up and said hey i want to come to the caves with you um so both of them ended up going to the caves uh, then wyatt had a was it a premonition, a hunch? I can't remember what the move is called. Um, um I think it was a hunch. I think it was a hunch. Let me just so I'd have to look at the sheet. I'm pulling up your sheet now. Don't worry. Uh so, You're very staticky. Yeah. Uh so it was tune in 
you first did a tune in and said asked who is it going to attack next and you had a little dream of um elias screaming and then you woke up ran out of the cave ran back in and said i just had a dream i don't know why i reacted to that dream so so aggressively um and then you had a hunch roll and in that hunch roll you failed but the hunch was still that something bad was going to happen at the police station uh, that's right that's what it was so you went to the police station with frankie um and as you got to the police station you heard screaming um you ran around the back of the police station got up and looked through the window and saw there was a monster inside the cell with elias uh elias was be <coughs> elias was being um slowly consumed by ice the same way that uh charlie was before um and these ice spikes were also coming out of the walls and about to pierce through uh elias as well you broke the window to the cell uh frankie uh whittled their way in um and then uh you called for help from maxine because nobody else could hear you because you were on the walkie-talkie um frankie started reading from the journal and it switched targets and started targeting frankie instead of elias uh frankie started shivering uh, maxine ended up showing up getting inside at that point the monster stopped everything that it was doing and vanished from inside the building um you guys were standing in the room with elias saw the monster outside the front window gave you a little smile with its creepy red eyes and then vanished again and I think that's pretty much where we left off. Yeah, I think so. All right, so the, obviously the more important story is the security guards in the woods. Um, so we're going to start there. Are we just heading out of the woods? Yep. Uh, we head. Oh, and look at that. This song is called Woods. Uh, so you, what was that? Shocking. Uh, so you guys start heading or are, are heading back on the mule with the item dragging behind you, the altar. No, you left it at no. uh, Elias's yeah. cabin. We put it no. under a thing of wood at yeah. the side of the cabin. Yep. Yeah, and we then hit it so other people won't find it. You are driving home. Is there anything that you're wanting to discuss on the way home or no? I think we would have just been idle chit-chatting because I don't think there was anything other than that rock was heavy. Yeah, I don't think anything major happened. No, not really. Okay, that's fine. So then we will switch over. Is Maxine here? Negatory. She's dealing with someone. Okay, well, um, <laughs> then I I need Charlie and Victor to <laughs> make some stuff up here. Oh no, we can fill his time in. We can. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Victor, what do you think our next uh, step should be? Your name is Victor. He's Charlie. I mean, Charlie. I'm Victor. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm curious what you're talking to yourself about at this point. <laughs> exactly. I never know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, Charlie, what do you think our next move should be? We got the stuff stashed. You got a, your contact number? You got to call him when you get back? Or do you just want to leave it for a bit and find out what everybody thinks? I think it'd be best to leave it for a bit. That way, all, anything to do with the filming can get done before it gets taken away. Actually, that's a really good idea. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, All right. Now that we have the pedestal 
uh, secure. We need to take care of the creature. Find a way to handle it. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I wonder if uh, Tom got any of the stuff that we need. I know it's going to take a little while, but we might want to come up with some kind of game plan on how to put that stuff into use so we can, you know, heat up an area, get that uh, creature. I guess, you know, what? honestly, what we should do is figure out how, what it's attracted to, like how we can lure it. We might be able to just get it trapped in the cave. Yeah, but it seems to, I don't know if it's just vanishing or teleporting. I don't, I don't know. It seems to be able to just, you know, vanish. I have a suspicion that it can do, that has something to do with the cold. Yeah, so if we can warm up that cave, you think that it'll keep it from doing that? Yeah, I, I think if we can warm it up, it will lose its abilities, and then it's in a, uh, it's in a confined area, which helps and hurts us, potentially. True enough, true enough. So I guess the trick will be, I mean, that's a pretty big cave. We can't heat the whole thing up, but trying to figure out where in the cave we can, you know, kind of heat up and keep them in that area. It's teleportation, however it does, it must have a range. If it's underground, it won't exactly be able to teleport out. So even if we can't heat the entire cave, it will not be able to get out without going through the heated area. Yeah, that's that's true. Or at least it, it makes sense that that's the way it should be. But, you know, things aren't always as they seem, right? They don't seem to be. So we can go with that idea. Um, I don't know, maybe we can come up with some little mini tests or some sort that uh, we can do that before we do the big one. The issue is a mini test would still be testing it on the creature. And at that point, it's all or nothing. Yeah, but if it keeps returning to the same spot, maybe that's like, you know, I don't think it's going to go to a different area. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I, I'm I only don't... talking about uh, trying to get it in a spot where we see what mini bits of heat will do to the creature. That's all I was thinking. We could always try. It would not hurt to go in with more information. Yeah, that's that's all I was thinking. All right, so maybe we should check out uh, some of the outfitters in town, see what we can find that would maybe generate a little bit of heat that doesn't take a whole bunch of energy and uh, that we can maybe use to try. I don't know. We'll come up with some ideas as we, I don't know, as we think about it, sleep on it, whatever. We got time. Yeah. I know that. It would need to be something that puts out enough heat that it won't be able to overpower it. Yeah, and I don't know if we'll have anything like that um, until Tom gets the stuff we asked for. For purely heating the cave, there's diesel heaters out there that throw out a lot of heat. Well, hopefully that was on Tom's list when he, we told him we wanted something that would heat a large area. Yeah, I, uh, we didn't give too much detail on what we were looking for there. Well, when we get back to the lodge, we'll maybe have a quick chat with Tom. Yeah, it'd be smart. Hopefully the guys haven't got up to anything stupid. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to put my... Uh, no, I'm not going to hold my breath. That's what I was going to say. I, I have a feeling Wyatt got up to something. Well, there's nobody there to watch him, so what do you expect? So we may need a little more security uh, or a little more on our crew. You and I can't do it all. Not necessarily. Okay. Is Maxine back yet? Yep. 
Okay. So, as I said, the more important storyline was taken care of right there, obviously. Um, <laughs> and now... What's going on? Okay, all good. Wyatt, are you there? Yep. Uh, so you and Maxine, uh, and Frankie, but Frankie's in hypothermia. She, they can't talk. Um, you, Elias, and Maxine are standing in. Did you go in the cell? I can't remember. No, I did not. Yeah, I didn't think uh, so. I don't think so. I got up to climb up there, but I don't know that I actually went in. Yeah, I don't think you did. I think Maxine went in instead of you. Um, anyway, so, Maxine, you're in the cell. Uh, Elias is standing hey, we there. Used, we used Wyatt's rope, right? Correct. His rope and his rifle is what you used. Okay. Um, so, and why it's still outside? That's what both of us are recalling, but I can't be too certain. I'm pretty sure what, that was What time case. of day is this? Um, it's nighttime. Um, probably around 10-ish. Okay. And how close are we to the lodge? Uh, well, you're on the other side of town. You're, okay. you're in the police station or the sheriff's office, and then the Honey Lodge okay. is way down at the bottom of the town. Okay. Knowing the well, size of the town, it's less than a five minute walk. Yeah. It's probably like okay. 10 minutes. Okay. So, Wyatt, are you okay out there? It's like eight blocks. Yeah, I'm alright. Okay. Yeah, I'm alright. All of these guys are in trouble in here, and I I don't want to leave them. Can you can you go back to the lodge and see if we can or no, would I have Elaine's phone number? Is that her name? Who's Elaine? Elaine? Are you talking to Evelyn? Who's the Evelyn? Evelyn. Um I mean you could have Tom's phone number. That's oh, yeah. Is. I guess I could phone Tom. What are we phoning Just Tom so that for? we can get some help. Like, get... The police need to get there. Yeah. We need to get out. I need emergency... Like, get them to the hospital. Get these guys to the hospital. Okay. So, if you could get Tom... To get the police so that we can get out of this cell... And that we're going to need an ambulance. What's your explanation? Yeah, I'll just put it for what's happening? Yeah. Why? What's your explanation for you guys breaking into this cell? And being in the cell. That we heard cell? screaming. That we heard screaming. So you broke in? Well, we, try, we tried to go in the front way, but it was locked. As a police station should be, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Wait, are the, is the security going to get back to find Maxine locked in the prison? Uh, I would say you because guys because we can't get I hold think, of the man. I would say you guys be showing up in the next like fifteen minutes here. Yeah. Still potentially enough time for her to be arrested if they're calling in the uh, cops and ambulance. Which would there even be an ambulance? Well, no. I feel like that's legit, though, asking. It's like, that's a good excuse. We heard screaming. So we were trying to You heard screaming, help. but you've also told the police that this man's insane, so. Well. Just saying. We were worried about, we were worried yeah, about we'll, him. We'll see how this goes. No worries. You'll, well, we'll it, see. We'll, we'll get you guys You'll have your It'll chance okay. to explain yourself. Okay. So, uh, Wyatt, you're running back to the lodge? Yeah. I'm running back to the lodge. Okay. Because uh, we had thermal blankets in the go bags, right? Yep. Yeah. You, you so, threw your blankets in. Okay. 
So in this situation, does Frankie just kind of vanish back to the lodge? Uh, Frankie is kind of just going to be, be there. Okay. So, uh, Maxine's fate is Frankie's fate. Yes. Okay. Isn't, aren't they, like, in a bad... No, they took one harm. Um, oh, okay. But they, uh... They're hurting, though, aren't they? With one harm, yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I thought you said it was like some hypothermia. Of some That's sort. just me saying that because the player is not here. No, I know, but we can play it out. Okay. Wyatt, you get back to the uh, lodge. Um, Tom's on the phone in the briefing room again. Tom, Tom, you gotta come quick. Give me a second, it's Wyatt. Been a, just, been a just one second. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we'll set People that up hurt. for- Who? Uh, Frankie and the guy that was in jail. Okay, uh, we'll set it up for Thursday. I'll give you a call back. Um, yeah, tomorrow around 3 p.m. Sounds good. All right, um, what, what do we need? Uh, blankets, warm. They need, they need to be warm. How many- you all have thermal blankets. How many more do you need? Do you have anything more than thermal blanket? Maybe warm drinks? I mean, we can brew a coffee, but that's going to take like five minutes. No time. Okay, so what do you need? I just need help. Warm drink. Okay, uh, he grabs a couple, few more blankets and follows behind you. Where are we going? Uh, jail. What? Just follow. So he charges on after you. Wait, how is Wyatt going to uh, explain all of this? He hasn't explained anything so far. Literally in this <laughs> entire campaign, he has not explained a single thing. We asked the what happened to the... The creature has a person with a mask, blah, 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 always has a logical description, but I don't, I'm curious how he's going to explain off this one logically. Uh, anyway, so Wyatt, you rush back to the police station, go around back. Tom's following behind you a little bit out of breath because he's not a 14 year old child. Uh, okay. Why is your rifle up there and why is that window broken? So the lady was in there and she had like liquid nitrogen and she was pouring it all over him, trying to kill him. And then uh, uh, Frankie tried to save him. And then she started pouring liquid nitrogen on Frankie and Frankie's been hurt. Okay, but. All right. Hello. W Maxine. Yeah. Hi, Tom. Um, what are you doing in, a in little... there? Okay, we're it's a little bit of a dilemma. Um, yeah, I'd say you broke I... into a police station. Okay, but uh, Wyatt and and Frankie were here and they were calling for help. And yeah, that the creature was in here with them. Where's it's Victor gone now. and Charlie? I, they went off into the you woods. Hear the, you to... hear it across the radio. Victor, Charlie, police station now. That's what we hear? Yeah, well, everybody hears it on their radio, but you guys too. Uh, all right, I guess we know where we're going when we get back. Why yeah, you guys, you guys station? are just coming into town. So you'll be coming in along that Nahani road on the left there. So you can just drive I straight to the police it's station. A... I assume it's exactly what we said. Uh, Wyatt's probably in trouble. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Can you reach the rifle? I don't know how this station's set up. Can you reach the rifle? Wyatt's rifle? Whose yeah. rifle? Yes, the rifle. Yeah. Okay, 
Throw it out the window. Are you ready? I mean, you make go. sure the safety... You already did it, I assume. Did yeah. he hear a gunshot because the safety was off? No. No, Wyatt unloaded it before using it. Uh, what a smart kid. Then you see the rope get thrown through the window. Okay, pull on that. Okay. Uh, so you pull on that. The rifle ends up hitting the other side this time. And now you have a way out. All right. Get out of there because you're not supposed to be in a police station. Um, definitely wasn't supposed to, weren't supposed to break into a police station. Um, you're going to have a fun time yeah, trying to details, explain this. Details. Details. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll get uh, Elias. Victor so and Charlie, you come around back after you hear talking behind the police station. Okay. So Frankie and I will try to get is he like wh how like what condition is he in elias is in the same condition as frankie uh he okay. got frozen but is well, thawed now well, okay well, well, window well, broken and why did he break him out he hasn't been broken out he's still in oh. okay. yeah we're trying to push him out i don't think he should be left in here by himself that thing attacked him and frankie Okay, he's going to stay here, and we're going to try sure? and play this off like we did nothing. Because we are not going to break him out of jail, man. If we break him out of jail, that's an additional crime to break okay, him well, and entering in the first place. Come on. Leave him. You have to remember Fine. that, yes, this is a show. But there are real-world consequences for things that you do on this show. I okay. I'm just. He was so defeated. He was, I was just, and then that thing came, or she came again, and it's like I just don't want him. I don't, fine, fine. We'll leave him. And now I All have right. to probably pay for this window as well. So, awesome job there. Um. Are there cameras? Are there cameras here? Can they see us? Uh, I mean, the, if anywhere in town has cameras, it would likely be the sheriff's office. Yeah, that doesn't mean. So I want to point no. out that there is just a normal window that could be broken to get people in I, and out of the jail cell. I know, but it was also it, it's <laughs> supposed to be high up, like you guys couldn't reach it normally. And you can't reach so it from the inside can window lift either. Each other to get in. Yeah, I know. It was slightly open as well. Hey, Maxine, can you reach my camera before you come back? Oh, yep, yep, yep. I got it. <laughs> Property of Wyatt Harris. <laughs> okay, I'm looking around to see if there's nothing left in the cell of ours. No. So I'll pop out after Frankie. Okay, so you guys all get out. Alright, first yeah. off, don't break and enter into places, especially a sheriff's office. Second, where were the security guards to make sure stuff like this doesn't happen? We were handling a situation out in the forest. We told them not to do anything stupid. I guess we can't depend on them for anything. And whose stupid hey, idea was this? I had a distress this? call. I had a distress call from Wyatt and Frankie. So, so Wyatt, you guys weren't around. Was the cause of all of this correct? I, I'm not blaming Wyatt. Wyatt. I think they heard something. Yes or no. I mean, I wasn't the one that uh, broke into the police station and assaulted the prisoner on their watch. Okay. I didn't answer his question, Wyatt. How did this all come to be? That's my question. That lady in the monster outfit 
broke into prison somehow, and I told you, he was like pouring liquid nitrogen on the guy and making him freeze to death. We heard his screams of agony and pain, and there were no police in the police station to save him. Somebody had to do something. You, you realize liquid nitrogen would do far more damage than that, don't you? I feel like it was it. legit. He was in pain. I understand that. I understand. But it is not our responsibility to break into places where we don't belong in order to save people. Uh, yes, great. In the woods, you see stuff happening, save them, right? Great. This is a police so station we... that you chose to break into. Hey, there were no police here, right? Wyatt, you guys checked, right? There was yeah. nobody here. I, I think yeah. we need to make a set of ground rules for this team. And number one is no breaking into the police station. All right, here's what we're going to do. Everybody... It's bedtime. We're going home, going to sleep. Understand? That's number one. Fine. In the morning, we're going to have a serious chat about what's going on here. And our security team is going to run said meeting and set up these ground rules so that this type of thing doesn't happen again. And what are the consequences if that does happen again, Tom? Because there's uh, well, obviously some in this We're going to start firing people. This seriously. All right. That's good. So we're going to... So it's acceptable to lie to get people locked up when they shouldn't be locked up. But it's not acceptable to save someone who's in danger of their life being murdered. Why shut up and go to bed? And now I see why things happen the way they happened before. And why it storms off. Storms off to the lodge or storms off into the darkness? His bedroom. Okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure that. Into the forest. <laughs> want to make sure we're not having a situation here. I'm going to see Finn. Surely he'll be outside at 10 o'clock at night by himself. <laughs> okay. I don't know. You don't know. All right. So you all go to your respective bedrooms uh one thing i just want to remind everybody about i don't know if you still care about it or not but tonight is the night of dr helena sinclair's virtual lecture all right so you wake up in the morning uh and you come down to the briefing room Wait, 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 wait. Tonight is the night of the lecture. So you're saying we missed the lecture? No. Like, it's the next day now. Tonight is the night of the okay. lecture. Gotcha. Okay. That makes more sense now. Thank you. Um, okay. So you all come to the briefing room. A breakfast uh, selection has already been laid out. There's pancakes, there's eggs, there's bacon, sausage, whatever you want. And... Tom is sitting at the end of the table with a very displeased look on his face. Uh, and he is on the phone. Uh, and then we have... He was like, Yes, I understand. And it won't happen again. And we will pay for all the damages. Um, apparently there was something, some commotion that caused them to want to do this. I'll deal with it. We're having a meeting this morning discussing consequences, ground rules, and results. Yep. Yep. Uh, again, I apologize profusely. He's okay. Perfect. All right. We will, uh, I assume, be talking to you later. All right. Thank you very much, officer. All right. Bye for now. Okay, welcome everyone to our first disciplinary meeting. I'm assuming first of many. Uh, again, as I stated, our security team is going to run it. Uh, because I have other things that I need to set straight. 
And first is finding out how much it's going to cost to get somebody out here to fix up a window at a police station. Um, Isn't there are some kind of repair shop in town here, Maxine? Is it's not yeah. right? It's for cars. Maybe you could talk to them, Tom. It's for cars. He fixes everything. Uh, Maxine said he fixes everything. He fixed why it's bare as well, so it's not just cars. And isn't he fixing your... Uh, yeah, he's fixing drone? my drone. That's not a car. Okay. He seemed quite handy. Great, he I'll handy, speak Tom. with him. Anyway, uh, I have to make some phone calls. Victor, Charlie, you know what's going to happen if they uh, aren't going to listen. Leaving this with you. And uh, I'll be back. All right, we got this, Tom. No problem. Just as a point of note, Wyatt has uh, a few pieces of paper and a pen, and he has stuff written down on the sheets of paper. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, to start things off, uh, Victor, we cannot trust these people. One of us needs to be with them at all times. I, I totally agree with that. Um yeah, we were just want to say how disappointed we are when we said, uh, you know, stay home and do research, and you guys left the lodge. Uh, we're supposed to be responsible for you guys, and when you leave the lodge, um, we need to be there so we can, you know, protect you from stuff like this. And so, not even just leaving the lodge to do more research, you left to break the law. Yeah, that, that goes without saying. So, uh, Yes, if you're leaving the lodge, uh, you need to be with uh, either Charlie or I so that we can, you know, make sure that you guys are at least taken care of and that you're not doing something stupid. That's what Tom wants. That's what we want. And uh, as you heard, if uh, you're not uh, paying attention to those rules, it could lead to your uh, to being fired. So, I mean, I know we're all here to do the same uh, the same thing. We want to, uh, you know, to search, do the search. And uh, so, you know, if we're going to do that, let's do it properly, you guys. Wyatt raises his hand. Yes, Wyatt. Yes. So just to be clear, does that mean that breaking the law is subject to termination? You're going to fire that, us if people break the law. That is what Tom said. And I, I'm, does I that suppose only there's... start now? Apparently now, yes. Why it starts marking some stuff off on his sheet. Yes, and we're talking about real stuff, Wyatt, not imagined, just so you know. I'm not talking about imagined. He broke the law multiple times and nobody said anything. Ver and if he the hadn't law, broken Wyatt. the law first, he wouldn't have been in jail to be attacked by the monster. No, he would be dead already. I did not break any laws. You do not understand oh, the legal system, so if we system, do something Wyatt. to stop someone from dying, then it's okay? Well, then I guess it's glad that he didn't die, so none of this matters. All right, we weren't there to see what happened, obviously. Uh, I do want to have a conversation with the... Uh, and I will talk to Tom before I do it. I'd like to have a conversation with the sheriff because I don't understand why there was no police there guarding a person that's in the cell. That doesn't even make sense. Maybe they're not used to having people in their uh, custody. I don't know, but uh, somebody should be there to watch them so that, you know, things like that don't happen. You guys should not have been responsible for that. And I realize, you know, uh, Maxine, Frankie, Wyatt, you guys did what you thought was right. I get it. But unfortunately, the rules are the rules. And so we got to obey them. Does anybody have any other questions or concerns? No, well, I understand. I just, I just felt like it was extenuating circumstances in this case. Well, it's because we we were the ones that brought him in. He was the one that it was like, yeah, he wouldn't have been there if we hadn't put him in that situation. I, I get it. You feel there's a sense of responsibility there. I get it. Yeah. Um, Typically, is, is Charlie ahead, lied right. to the police officers to get him arrested and stole his stuff. And I know that stealing is against the law. So that's something that he did that got us in this situation. 
First Wait, of all, wasn't Wyatt, Wyatt just... already out of the building when I gave the description of what happened? Um. I yes wasn't and... there for the full description. But yes and I was no. There you for were the original part. He was there for part of it, and then Victor took him out. Um. Because he was arguing with you for a little bit, and then Victor's like, all right, okay. all right, why well, it's time to go. Um, but you also walked out of the police station scot-free, so there was definitely yeah, some that. lies going on. Wyatt, we did not steal anything. And let's just put it this way. If Elias gets better, then he's welcome to his the things that we've taken. It's not we're holding it for him. We're not taking it away from him. He gave us verbal permission to take his research before we came back to the cabin. <laughs> he did what? You're right. But you told us to take it first. That doesn't make it better when you get it. permission after the fact. I told you to take it after we had spoken to him. Not Just the because first time. you don't see him and you haven't to be, talked to, to him be doesn't fair, mean Wyatt, the conversation didn't happen. You wouldn't you wouldn't know whether they spoke to him about it or not. Because they were in the woods without you. Oh, I just assumed. Because he was like, take all of his research. Yeah, and I'm sitting here it's saying like it take it right out of in the can't forest. Stop you. I was anyway, just trying to save us time. This is neither here nor there. We already know what the story is. Uh, believe it's it if you want, Wyatt. We know what it is. Law is breaking the law. Yeah, and we know that, and that's why we didn't do it, Wyatt. So I'm more interested in knowing if what you said is true in the jail cell. Uh, tell me, Maxine. Did this uh, person in the costume that Wyatt is talking about, did they have cans of, uh, of liquid nitrogen? No. No. But well, what was... is Wyatt talking about then? I liquid think he's just nitrogen a... would have done far more damage than Yeah, I think frostbite. he's just, that's what he's thinking. Well, that's kind of what I thought too, but I, when I was hearing his story, I was wondering. Wyatt wasn't in the cell. He was just going by what? His... Okay, well, we got to all get on the same page here because from what charlie and i have seen so far uh this isn't some kind of prank this isn't some kind of costume this is something real and we all got to take it seriously i uh, yeah the thing is it's like you know we always have our doubts and it's like why it legitimately has his doubts but it's like there is something going on how she's doing it like what she's using i have no idea but and if Wyatt is taking both... this situation too lightly, we cannot risk taking him with us out into the field. Uh, just so you know, because uh, you guys weren't there, when we moved the uh, altar, uh -huh. the fog moved with us. So we were always in the clear, and the fog moved around us the whole way back to the cabin where we've yes, hidden. The, the clearing... The clearing followed the altar, and the whispers never were never present. While yeah, with that, the that's altar. not that's not normal. Did you did you guys? Well, because I touched the altar. We didn't touch it with our hands. We okay. Put, that's what I was. No, yeah. we yeah. didn't. We knew it. Charlie knew what you did, and so we didn't do it that way. Well, Charlie got a little a little taste of it when he. Yeah, we pulled Not it over with Elias the off there. No physical contact was made. The altar is currently hidden in a safe location. But obviously something, but it's the same type of thing. It's like we've we've experienced this coldness, Charlie, a couple times. But it's like that's, you know, and now Frankie's done it. I've done it or had it. It's happen. not natural. But there might be. There might be some explanation as to what it's causing and why it's assuming it's liquid nitrogen because it has the same type of effect. I know not as extreme, Charlie, I get that, but I'm just saying. 
we don't we don't know what's causing it and this is this is what we're we're skeptical that's what the whole show is about is trying to discover what yes. what's causing uh, this. uh wyatt let me ask you this um did you see the creature or lady or person uh exit the window like leave the building leave the jail cell I couldn't see in the window at all. I'm this tall. The Did thing was up there. Did you see her leave? They were in a locked jail cell. Their only way out would have been your broken window. Did you see her leave? I didn't see anybody go in the window, but I didn't see any broken spot where she got in either. So she probably got out the same way she got in. Through a locked door. It, it, it was like no, she disappeared. That she wouldn't have the key to. Or it. she locked, locked it her, behind locked her. from the inside. She could have had a key. The jail cell hub. Jail cells getting out of do not. Yeah. Yeah. Jail cells do not have a lock from the inside to unlock and lock as you please, Wyatt. He may not have locked it behind her when she went in. We weren't there for the whole thing. We got there when he was screaming. And again, I'm this tall. I couldn't see in the window. Hey, Max, we had to climb up. When yeah. Rachel left, did the jail cell door open or close? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was. So it was just. How like, would you describe what happened? I. It was just. It was just like she was gone. I don't. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. None. Would you describe it as like? vanishing teleporting like how what do you think the thing is it's like i was concentrating on frankie and because they were in pain they were getting they were so too much going on i get it i get it but you notice uh, temperature change when she vanished i again i it was yeah i guess because they stopped both like frankie and Elias both were, well, was I in there when Frankie was being attacked? Because it switched, the thing switched over to Frankie. Frankie. I don't know if I was in there at that point. You were in Game there. Master. You were in there after Frankie was already being, it had already switched to Frankie. Yeah. So what she's asking the game master is, was there, did she have a noticeable temperature change when the creature left? Uh, yeah. I would assume so. Yeah, because everything started, like, going away when it Or left. falling, or, yeah. But, it, yeah, like, the thing is, even with Elias, it's like, once the thing was focused on Frankie, the same thing wasn't happening to Elias, so I'm assuming that she has to turn her attention on something or touch something. It was like they were touching. I think, or touch. the, I think so. I'm trying to see if I I can't remember if they... I don't know if it is uh, Charlie, because remember in the caves there was... Was uh, he touching it? The walls were kind of like making spikes and stuff. Remember that? But that's not the same thing. That was spikes jutting out. This is the body frost bright uh, frost and ice growing on the body. Yeah, but the creature also wasn't in the room with you when you were getting covered. Oh, right. I would have known that, so I wouldn't have said that. <laughs> Is that you rewinding? Yeah, that's me oh, trying okay. to rewind. It was a, a, hor a horrible job. It's a but... great rewinding noise. Thank you. So all we really know is the creature somehow got into a lock cell, tried to kill Elias, and got out of it without leaving through the door or the window. Okay, so if we think back to the cave, the same thing. It... She just disappeared, didn't she? She yep. essentially teleported from one side of us to the other. So, yeah, I could have looked away when I was looking at Frankie. I, I, yeah. So I, essentially what Charlie's saying is 
she didn't need the window to get in and out. No. The window was broken by... You guys. Yeah. By Frankie and Wyatt, so... But she was already in the building. She had to have gotten but in somehow. that's what I'm somehow. saying. Yes. Yes, Wyatt. But she left. The jail cell did not open, so she did not leave that way, and she did not leave through the window because you were watching it. I'm gonna... I should check my camera because I threw a camera in there. I don't know if it recorded anything. Oh, perfect. Uh, let's do that. I would also like to see if we could get a viewing of the uh, their office's security footage. So, <clears throat> just to be clear, um, a lot of you had switched your cameras to still shots. Right. Was that... Did Wyatt do that as well? No. No? Wyatt was recording? I've never switched mine to still. Okay. If I need stills, they could be pulled from the uh No, I know. Footage. Um, but you guys no, had recommended Yeah, you guys had recommended switching because of the corrupted footage that you have. So, what you see um you go back on your GoPro and you see yourself running up to the uh, police station. You see um, the uh, <laughs> you holding the rifle and tying a rope to it and throwing it at the window. And then you see yourself breaking the rest of the glass. Um, <clears throat> and then you again throw it through the window, pull it tight. Frankie climbing up the rope, going into the building, and then you see the camera just start flying. It goes through a window and lands on the other side of the uh, jail cell. So all you catch is a quick, like, millisecond glimpse of three people standing from, like, a bird's eye view. And then you see floor on the other side of the cell. <laughs> well, the video is not the most helpful. Excellent job, cameraman. It was a good thought. It just didn't work out. Good try, Wyatt. I wasn't throwing it to get the video. I was throwing it to try to stop the lady from hurting them. And maybe throwing in a footage. GoPro would make that difference. It was we something. didn't have anything else. At least we were there to help. True enough. So, anyway, does everybody get what the meeting's about? Are we all on the same page now? Yes, I get it. And really, truly, it was the only time that we've ever been, like, that we haven't had one of you around, so. So what does that tell you? Yes, I get it, Victor. Tom walks back into the room. Y'all would have let him die. Who's dying now? Well, I'll tell you this, oh. Wyatt. If we would have been there, none of this would have happened, and I guarantee he wouldn't have died. Oh, so uh, wait, I want to I want to watch this world. Walk me through the world in which none of that happened and he's not dead. Who are who are we killing? Wait, Victor's explaining how if he'd been there and not done any of this that uh, Elias would still be fine and there wouldn't have been any problems. So I'm waiting for his explanation as to how in his world that would have gone down. I take it the meeting went very well. well the meeting so went pretty let good. Me, let me paint you a picture. You uh, are having a pain in the ass. You're locked out of a police station and uh, you hear screaming like somebody's dying inside. Well, first of all, nothing would have happened because you guys were at the lodge where you were supposed to be. Okay, well, that perhaps, doesn't change perhaps, the fact that he's screaming and dying inside. 
why it, we might have read in the paper the next day that Elias was dead or gone. But none of this well, would have happened. Being there wouldn't have changed that. You just said that you, if you were there, it would he wouldn't have died. But none of this no. none of these problems wouldn't have happened. That's right. I would have said I said none of these things would have happened. That's right. So I'm right. His death is one of the things we're talking about. Uh, I will tell you this. It won't happen again because there'll be a policeman with uh, Elias the whole time because that doesn't make any sense. Oh, so you're going to go tell the police how to do their job now? This will be fun. That's exactly what I'm going to do. You are not coming along, Wyatt. Yeah, it figures you don't want anybody there to tell him the truth. All I right. think everyone <clears throat> is tired of your antics. No, just tired, period. We should just, you know, chill. All right. So. I've spoken with some people. I've ironed over. Please don't do it again. Or there will be consequences of you being terminated from your positions. Make sense? Cool. I know you probably have stuff to do today. So uh, why don't you go on and do whatever you need to do. And we'll take it from... Start over. Clean slate, right? I'm glad right. to know that we're like five days into shooting... And we're already back to when people are dying, we're going to let it happen. I don't think that's what they're saying, Wyatt. It's like, I understand why we did it. Yeah. We're only four days into <laughs> shooting, actually. <laughs> I understand, but at the same time, I also get what they're saying, too. But yeah, if they had been here, maybe, yeah, maybe we could have done more to capture the creature i don't i don't know at this point who knows yeah and i don't want to point any fingers at anyone but uh speaking of four days of shooting uh how much footage have you guys got we got some decent footage yeah so maybe you guys need to you know spend some time working on how you're going to get footage and we'll worry about the uh logistics of the security part and taking care of people. Ouch, Victor. Well, I would have thought Victor Tom would have brought that up. He, he can't even tell you how he would have saved somebody after saying that he would have saved him if he was there in a world in which he could have controlled all the facts. So I'm, I wouldn't take it that hard. All right. I knew this was going to happen when we have multiple people from multiple different backgrounds, multiple different personalities coming into one area to try and figure stuff out. Guess what? You're all here to do a job. Do your jobs. Stop being children and just get the job done. I know I can't really say that to you, Wyatt, but still, just do your job. All right. All right, Charlie, you got this crowd. I'm going to go to the police station. Sounds good. All right, I'll be back in a bit. Don't forget to get footage. I mean, it's not a bad idea, Wyatt. Everybody's getting footage. They all have stuff strapped to their chest. I know I was just reminding Victor to make sure that when he goes to the police station and tell him how to do his job, that he makes sure and gets footage of it. Anyway. Can we do get you guys a have for a child? Do you guys have plans for the day? Uh, I'm trying to think of what else we wanted to do. I believe it was just gotta... watch the uh, seminar. Well, that's later tonight, though, isn't it? Yeah. What time was the seminar? It's tonight. Okay. 
So, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else we haven't really talked to. Because the pe What is happening? I don't know what is happening. Sorry. My cord was getting caught. There we go. Wasn't me. I'm not here. I'm going to the police station. All right. Okay, so we've been to... The press. That was Victoria or Vicky. And... Maggie was the... Was that the older lady with the spooky aura? Um... Yes. Okay. So Olivia and Hazel, were they at the, they were the ones investigating the power shortages? Where do we find, do I have to go to the press to see how we would find and talk to them. It was I don't Olivia, know Frankie... Olivia, Edmund, and Hazel. Right. Well, we already know that Edmund from Frankie's adventures that Edmund is doesn't believe in any of this stuff. So, uh, Hazel is another guide. Um, At the Oli lodge. Yes, Olivia, you can talk to, and have talked to. You just didn't ask their name. Oh, where's Olivia? I don't know. You don't know her. No, no, no. But you're saying that I already talked to her. I talked not, to her? Not you, but people have talked to her. They just don't know who she is. Okay. And then we have Charlie the... That was the artist at the Artist's Haven. Uh, yeah. Artisans. And then I also... Right. Hey, I want to... I feel like I would like to go back and talk to her. Okay. Well, now that we've kind of seen the same thing... I don't know. Well, maybe she'll know where this Olivia is. Yeah, I think I'm going to go and... Because I did talk to her a little bit, but... Yeah, I think I'm going to go back. So... Is it okay? Is it okay if I go to the... Artisan Haven by myself or you guys it's like I promise I won't I'm just going to talk I'm not going to be doing anything because Victor's gone to the police station and I don't know if you guys if Charlie wants to stay with Wyatt or not I have no idea I'm going to be keeping an eye on Wyatt okay and I don't know what Frankie's doing Well, I'm going to follow you so we can get some footage. Sure. Uh, I guess then we're all going. Okay, so I'm going to go to... Take me to uh, the artist... Artisan's Haven. 